How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be talking about AB 3058, and this law would change the way that all firearms are to be stored when they are left in a vehicle unattended. So for example, um, many of you know that I am an attorney, I practice in California, and when I go to the courthouse, I have to leave my firearm in my vehicle because I'm not allowed to take my firearm into the courthouse. This law would change the requirements of storing that firearm in my vehicle when it's being left unattended. This bill does not specifically focus on transporting firearms. It's specifically about storing firearms when they are unattended in a vehicle. If you're interested in checking out California laws on transporting firearms, you can click the card up here and it'll take you to a video I made about California laws and transportation laws in California. So currently we do have a law on the books in the state of California. It focuses on the storage requirements for a handgun in a vehicle when the vehicle is unattended. And the existing law requires a person when leaving a handgun in an unattended vehicle to lock the handgun in a vehicle's trunk, lock the handgun in a locked container and place the container out of plain view, lock the handgun in a locked container that is permanently affixed to the vehicle's interior or not in plain view, or to lock the handgun in a locked toolbox or utility box. First and foremost, the major change that this bill would do, which AB 3058 would do, is it would apply the language to all firearms. It would no longer be exclusive to just handguns. So I'll just read the language to you real quick. It states, except as otherwise provided in subdivision B, a person shall, when leaving a firearm in an unattended vehicle, secure the firearm as follows. One, by locking the firearm in the vehicle's trunk and securing the firearm to the vehicle using a cable or chain and lock. So this number one is a little bit different than the existing law because first it applies to all firearms, not just handguns, but it also requires that any firearm that you put in a trunk um, cannot just be stored in the trunk like freely. It can't just be in the trunk. It has to be attached to the vehicle with a cable or chain and a lock. Two, by locking the firearm in a locked container that is affixed to the vehicle by cable or chain and lock in the trunk or elsewhere in the vehicle's interior that is not in plain view. So again, number two changes things as well because it applies to all firearms, but it also adds in that cable or chain connected to the vehicle with a lock as well. And number three is the one that I saw a lot of Reddit posts being made about and a lot of videos being made about and a lot of discussion about California trying to require that people actually put safes in their vehicles and, and lock their firearms in safes and that there's gonna be this new safe requirement for all vehicles. Number three says, by locking a firearm in a locked container that is permanently affixed to the trunk or elsewhere in the vehicle's interior that is not in plain view. So yes, under this bill, you are storing a firearm properly by putting it in some sort of container that is permanently affixed to your vehicle, but this bill does not make um, that modem the exclusive way to complying there are still those two other mechanisms. Now, I don't like all this additional language that's being put in. Personally, me, I think our existing law does exactly what we need to do. It doesn't need to be expanded to all firearms. I don't even think that the existing law in regards to storing a handgun is really necessary, but to each his own. And the fourth and final way is by locking a firearm in a locked toolbox or utility box that is affixed to the vehicle. So a lot of people ask, can I store a firearm in a utility box um, or in a toolbox that is attached to like, say, your truck or something like that? Under existing law and under this bill, yes, you can do that as long as that container, that type of container is locked. So the last thing I wanna do is look into some specific definitions that are in AB 3058, because it adds some clarity to what exactly this bill is trying to do. The first definition is what exactly is a locked container? This bill defines lock container means a secure container that is fully enclosed and locked by a padlock, key lock, combination lock, or similar locking device. The term lock container does not include the utility or glove compartment of a motor vehicle. So a lot of you might ask, well, does the glove compartment qualify as a lock container? And under this bill and even under transportation um, rules, no, a glove compartment does not qualify as a locked container. Lock means a locking device with a shackle portion that is at least 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So this language of the bill, which is being added in, it actually adds a specific diameter of the type of lock that there needs to be for you to comply with the language of this bill. So if this were to pass, you would have to ensure that whatever padlock or locking device that you use meets that diameter requirement. So the last definition I wanna take a look at in this bill is what exactly is a trunk? A lot of you might ask, what exactly is a trunk under this language? The bill defines a trunk to mean a fully enclosed and locked main storage or luggage compartment of a vehicle that is not accessible from the passenger compartment. The language goes on to say a trunk does not include the rear of a hatchback, station wagon, or sports utility vehicle, any compartment which has a window or a toolbox or utility box attached to the bed of a pickup truck. So this is critical. A lot of you might ask, well, what about SUVs? What about these other types of vehicles? A trunk cannot be accessed through another passenger compartment of the vehicle. It must be fully enclosed and compartmentalized on its own. 
So for example, if you have a trunk compartment that can be accessed through maybe a drop down of the back seat, that might not qualify as a trunk because you can access it. I know California law is weird, but that's the way that this language reads. That type of trunk might actually fall out of the trunk definition of this bill. And the last caveat, which I'm not gonna really cover a lot because I think it's kind of foolish and I hate when this type of stuff is added into bills of this sort and California laws in general, this bill, excludes um, the, its application to police officers, to law enforcement, to certain peace officers. Like always, California feels that these types of individuals are above the common residence, so it excludes them from the language. So in summary, what this bill actually does is it expands the language of the existing bill to all firearms and places more stringent requirements on storing a firearm in your vehicle when that vehicle is unattended. So I hope that answers all your guys' questions. I got a lot of questions about this specific bill, so I thought I would just put out a quick video explaining what exactly it is so that you could walk away with some sort of knowledge of what exactly this bill is trying to do. If you found this video helpful and you find my videos helpful in general and you would like to support the channel, the best way to do that is to join the Patreon and I'll put a link down the details to my Patreon page. Another way to support the channel is to use the various affiliate links down the details. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, a nation that draws a great distinction between its scholars and its warriors, while its laws are written by cowards and its wars fought by fools.